Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Flowshop. My name is Joseph. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you're already an existing subscriber and you joined today's video, thanks for taking the time to join us and I hope you do learn something in this video. Before I start, I just want to say a couple of things before we get into today's tutorial. So a lot of people have been saying that frequency separation is a very destructive way of retouching and that dodge and burn is superior to frequency separation. But I have been using frequency separation for a very long time and I think I've been getting decent enough results. So I'm going to show you how I do it. But what I want to let you know is that when it comes to my process or using frequency separation and dodge and burn, I like to use them together. So I'm going to use frequency separation to a point where I think it's done enough. So I don't go too far and then I'm going to use dodge and burn to further enhance the image from that point. So I'm not using frequency separation to solve all the blemish and color tone problems in the image. I'm just using it to prepare a base just to shorten the time I'll spend whilst using dodging and burning. Now, one thing you need to understand when you're using frequency separation is that you need to know the bit depth of your image, whether it's an 8 bit, 16 or 32. And the way you can do it is by going is by going to image coming down to mode and you'd notice if your image is 8 bits or 16 bits it's going to the check mark is going to be on one of them and currently it's on 16 bits that is very important because when you're running the frequency separation action you would need to choose between 8 bits and 16 bits there are lots of videos out there concerning frequency separation and that's another reason why i was holding off creating the tutorial because i felt there was a lot of information out there but my process may be a little bit different and some of you might find it interesting so i just decided to record this tutorial and put it out there for whoever might find it useful so now that i know or I've established the fact that my image is in 16 bits. When I'm going to choose the action, I'm going to choose a 16 bit version. Now, if you're wondering why the image is already clean, I've already done my healing, which is right here, right? So when I zoom in a little bit, I use the healing brush to heal all the blemishes in the image and just to prepare it for frequency separation. Now, I know some people like to use um, the high layer or the texture layer inside frequency separation to fix all texture problems. But I like to do my healing way before I start with frequency separation. But whichever process you find easy for you, just go with it. <laughs> now that we know that the image is in 16 bits and I've already done my healing, the next thing I'm going to use, the next thing I'm going to do is run my frequency separation action. So I'm going to press play and it's going to open up this dialog box, right? But I want you to look on the right hand side. You see there's a low layer and there's a high layer. So the term frequency separation just means that you're separating one particular image into two different frequencies. And the frequencies are high, which contains your textures, fine lines, um, blemishes and things of that nature. And then you have a low layer, which is a blur version of the picture that has just your tonal variations and color present in the image. So to make it less technical, frequency separation is just you separating your layers into one to contain the textures and one to contain the color information. That's as simple as it can get. All right. Now, when you're choosing your blur radius, it would vary depending on the camera you, you're using because the megapixels count, the kind of lens you're using, how close you are to your subject and stuff like that. All those things will determine the radius. And so I can't tell you that use 2.5 or use 5 or use 100, but I'm going to show you how you can easily determine the number that is suitable for the image you're working with. Okay, so now that this Gaussian Blair box has opened, right? It, it randomly selects an area. You might be lucky and it might select an area like this, right? And that's fine, but you shouldn't be scared when it just shows you an area like this. So what we're gonna do is just look for an area that looks like it's gonna have a lot of texture and color information. So I'm gonna click on her right cheek her left cheek, which is my right, looking at it. <laughs> and that's what's gonna show in this dialog box. Now, when I click and start dragging it around, I'm gonna see the raw resolution of the image. But when I let go, the blur radius of 2.5 is gonna be applied. But looking at this blur radius, I think it's too small because I can still see a lot of the blemishes or the skin texture on this particular layer, which is gonna be the low layer. And I feel the blur is not enough. Now, if I go all the way to like 135, this is way too smooth. And we don't want the smoothness to be about this point because it's basically useless right now. Because when I click on the eye, for example, I can't even tell that this is an eye. It's just giving me a darker tone. But when I click it, it's showing me that it is the eye that is in the box. But when I let go, it's way too blur. So I'm going to come down to, let's say, 6.4. The eye, you can see it's an eye, but when I come down to where the textures are, it looks like it's gotten rid of the texture, right? Because when I go back to, let's say, 2.9, you can see we have more texture showing here. But when I go to about 6.4 or 
or 5.4 where I was. It's a little bit blur and that's something you should aim for. But I'm going to go a little bit high up to let's say 6.2. And I think that works really well. I'm just going around to make sure I'm not leaving any textures behind. All right, I think this is a very good point to start off. So I'm just going to press OK and Photoshop is going to enter the matrix, do its own thing, do the calculations and separate the layers for me. So one thing you notice in the group is I have a high layer, like I mentioned earlier. I have a brush, which I didn't mention, but I'm going to get to. And I have a low layer. So like I said, the low layer has all your color information and stuff like that. The high layer, which is just this one, is grayish and has all of your textures. If I zoom in a little bit, you see there's no color information. It's only textures that's present. So if you didn't do a good job with your separation, you'll be seeing some color. Actually, let me just delete it and show you. So let me delete this frequency separation action and then make these visible run another action because i know i set it to six but i'm just going to go overboard for you guys to see so i'm going to go to somewhere around 34 which is a little bit too much right and i'm going to press ok it's going to do the separation all right when i hide the frequency separation layer there's still no change to the image which means the separation is correct right but because my blur was a lot now if i hide all these things and come back into my high frequency layer that's the only one that's visible you can see you're seeing color information and that is so wrong so don't let the image get to this point so i'm going to delete this and i'm going to run the action one more time and i'm going to set the value of the radius to six because that's what we used before i deleted the layer so back to six and press ok let photoshop do its thing and separate the layers so like I said, I used to use the brush and I'll sample and paint over um, just to blend in. Let me demonstrate that before we begin. So I'm going to hit B for my brush tool. That's a normal brush tool, right? And you can sample anywhere you want and then just paint. And then you'd essentially be evening out the skin tones. But you have to be really careful with the opacity and flow and... You have to always press alt to sample and paint and for me it wasn't giving me like accurate results you can see clearly i've painted um, a color that isn't supposed to be there in an area that isn't supposed to be you know and when i sample and paint it was just it wasn't going to give me as accurate of a blending as i normally would want another way people used to do was when they duplicate the low layer so command j to duplicate it then you can use um, your lasso tool so you can select lasso um, drag around the area you want go to filter apply the blur and it was it was also a process i was using initially but um, it's something that i don't use anymore i rather use the mixer brush tool and that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial so when you hit b for your brush tool and you press and hold where the brush icon is you can always come down to mixer brush and the settings i use for mixer brush is the wetness is set to 30 the load is 20 mix 15 and the flow 10. i bring the smoothening all the way down to zero and also make sure that sample all layers is unchecked so now we're going to use the mixer brush to even out the skin tones but there are a few things i want to do like extra layers i want to create just to serve as a guide you know so i don't go overboard so the checks are rather simple i'm gonna hit the black and white adjustment layer so i'm gonna make this a black and white layer right but it's on an adjustment layer so it's not really affecting what's below it now after that i'm gonna go back to my actions and run my noise action but in case you don't have a noise action i can show you how to create it from scratch so i'm gonna create a new layer i'm going to go to edit and come down to fill and i'm gonna fill it with 50 percent gray after that, I'm going to go to filter, come down to noise, and I'm going to add noise to this gray layer. I can increase the amount, which isn't too good. So I always like to keep it a little bit low, maybe somewhere around 16.57. Set it to Gaussian and make sure it's monochromatic and press OK. Now that I have this, all I'm going to do now is just change the blending mode from normal to soft light. So you'd see it's still the same black and white layer, but we have this noise filter on it. What I'm going to do now is just open my frequency separation layer and click on the low copy that we made. The low copy is just the same layer as the low layer with nothing done to it. It's just a copy so that, for example, whilst I'm painting, if I maybe like make a mistake somewhere around here, maybe I over blare, um, maybe it's like this level and I can't undo it. I can't step back. Um, I don't need to delete the entire frequency separation layer. I can just delete the low copy 
and everything is still intact my separation is still there and i can just hit command j to make a copy of the low layer and start afresh so now that we have a copy and i'm set to my mixer brush what i'm gonna do now is pay attention to the areas just like dodging and burning that um, don't have a very even transition and then i'm gonna start painting over them so make sure your mixer brush has sample all layers unchecked because if you do have it checked it's going to be sampling all layers and you'll be getting something like this and this isn't what we want so i'm going to undo this and i'm going to uncheck sample all layers and we're going to start blending out the differences in skin tones so i'm going to start painting right here and mind you i'm also paying attention again to the direction of the skin so i'm not painting across where i'm not supposed to be painting across so I'm always just trying to paint along the grain, right? So I'm just painting just a little bit like that, evening out the skin tones. In case you can't see anything, here's the before and after. You can see that we've been able to even out the skin tones just a little bit around the forehead. So something like this is good. It doesn't have to be perfect again because, because I know I'm going to use Dodge and Burn to continue wherever frequency separation is going to stop in this case so all i'm doing is just trying to even out skin tones where the transitions are too abrupt i'm just painting over those to mix them up and you can tell because i'm using the mixer brush it's sampling like it's it's sourcing from the right place if i'm in the highlights i just make sure i'm painting in the highlights alone i'm not really dragging from like the dark areas into the light areas and from the light areas into the dark areas i'm just sampling well, it's automatically sampling, so I'm just painting across the areas I want to blend and it's magically doing everything. It, it saves a lot of time because I don't have to press all to sample like when I'm using a normal brush. Also, I'm brushing like I'm doing dodge and bend, so I'm not like I don't have a very big brush and I'm just making uh, like blanket changes to certain areas. I am paying particular attention to the area I am reducing and increasing the brush size accordingly just so I stay within the confines of the areas I want to correct. I'm not using two big brushes or very small brushes. I'm just trying to stay within the confines and you know all these little things when you pay attention to will help keep your image looking um, like you really haven't done anything. So there's a little before and after and you can see it's looking really smooth if i hide the noise layer you can see it's not really doing much but now you can see the change a lot more than if the noise layer is active and i do my before and after it's not as drastic as um, when the noise isn't present so to show you that you can do it without the noise layer let me uncheck it and then just keep going right here i just did that so you guys can know that even with frequency separation you can set some checks for yourself and always make sure your brush isn't set to sample all layers because otherwise um maybe let me demonstrate that so if I, if I click on sample all layers and then i paint somewhere here for example if i hide the black and white layer you'd see it's painting a black and white right because it's sampling the adjustments that that is even on top of the low copy and that's not what we want so i'm going to undo that and then go back turn it on Make sure sample all layers is unchecked. I've said this like three times because <laughs> it's really, really important. All right, so now I'm just around here and still painting with very short strokes, more like you're sketching or shading. Um, that's the technique I'm using. And I'm using a Wacom tablet. If you really want to take retouching seriously, I would really, really, really ask that you get a retouching tablet. I'm using the Wacom Intuos Pen. And touch the medium size I was using the small for a very long time but um, and that was because I was using a laptop but since I changed to the iMac and I had a more stable setup I decided to get the, the medium because I'm not going anywhere I was using the small just because it was portable and I could take it anywhere it wouldn't occupy a lot of space in my bag but now that I'm stable I just got a medium just so I can have a little bit of a bigger area to work with, a bigger surface area. Also because the iMac is 27 inch, so having a bigger Wacom tablet in this case 
um, just makes the mapping to the surface area a little bit better okay so even with the lips i'm still using the same mixer brush and you know i'm not changing settings i'm not changing anything it's just a brush size so i have my left hand on my left and right bracket keys so if i need to go and make the brush big i'll just tap on the right bracket key to make it bigger if i want it to be smaller i just click on the left bracket key and just to make that one smaller so that's just about it i really um really really like the convenience that the mixer brush gives All right you can also experiment with the numbers but by no means should you stick to the numbers i'm using um, maybe you can start with it and then experiment and find what works for you all right so this is just about it for me i think i love where i've been able to move the image to so i'm gonna uncheck the black and white layer even delete them because i don't need them anymore and just do it before and after of the frequency separation so you see we've made a lot of changes and you can understand why if you're not careful with frequency separation you can change the shape of someone's face because when i'm doing it before and after you'd see that even though i've even out the tones between the highlights and the mid tones and the shadows there's still a little bit of a shift in her face you know and that is what i'm sure they consider to be distractive <laughs> retouching but i'm just going to go onto my low layer and reduce the opacity to about 60%. All the time when I do frequency separation, I'm always bringing down the opacity just so I can bring some elements of the unretouched parts just to shine through a little bit. So that's what I like to do. And at this point, I think we can move on from here and go straight into Dodge and Burn. But the Dodge and Burn video is coming out on, su on Saturday. So yeah um i think we're done with frequency separation for today if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and um, don't forget to tune in on saturday to watch the dodge and ben continuation and how i'm going to use that to move this image to the next so yeah if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like let's leave a comment down below let's have a discussion about the frequency separation process and the way i use it if it's something you're going to include in your process do let me know in the comments down below as well if you learned something new with this process um do let me know in the comments down below as well and i'll see you guys on saturday it's right around the corner don't forget put it in your calendar because i'm going to see you soon all right bye everyone